I know what you're thinking. Why in the world is this man claiming that the Confederacy won the Battle of Gettysburg? It has been recorded since the battle that it was either the or a major turning point of the Civil War and was a disastrous defeat for the Confederate Army that sent the South on a downward spiral into ultimate defeat. Well, I am not arguing the Confederacy won the Battle of Gettysburg. The inspiration and research for this video comes from Chapter 4 of Jason Phillips' book entitled Die Hard Rebels, The Confederate Culture of Invincibility. The chapter is called Grey Grapevines, Rumors and the Distant War. This book occupies a space in my top 10 favorite books written on the American Civil War, and this chapter is what places it in that list. It revolves around the use of rumors during the Civil War and their implications on the Confederacy's mindset about how the war was progressing. Historians tend to shy away from rumors in the historical records because they are counter to what they are attempting to uncover, the truth. However, if one looks at rumors and how they impacted people's mindsets, it helps to explain a group of people's actions and reactions. Philip's book is about how the Confederacy as a whole truly believed they were invincible, and this chapter explains that they even let rumor dictate their own perception of reality. For instance, and this relates back to the title of the video, a telegraph correspondent followed Lee's army during the Pennsylvania campaign, witnessed all three days of battle including Pickett's charge, and their first reports he sent back declared Gettysburg a victory for the South. The Richmond Dispatch claimed that Lee had won an overwhelming victory in the Keystone State, and that after such a major victory, Lee was poised to capture Baltimore, Maryland, or Washington, D.C. Reports rushed into the hands of an eager Southern public wanting to hear of the great news about their country's victory against the United States. It was not only newspaper reporters who told of Gettysburg as a great victory, but soldiers wrote home to their wives and other family members that the Union Army had been soundly defeated in pitched battle. In conjunction with the Gettysburg campaign, rumors spread that a major battle right outside of Baltimore had killed four Union generals and severely wounded Union General George Meade. Phillips argues that these rumors sustained the Confederate war effort. How were they able to go on fighting for so long, and how did they keep morale high? Rumors are the answer. Rumors gave the men confidence and reassurance that the South would ultimately be victorious. Even after the defeat and capture of Vicksburg on the Mississippi River, Southerners were at a loss at how they could have been defeated. However, that did not dash their hopes of independence. They were sorrowful because the war would continue, but truly believed it would work out in their favor. Rumors began to spread that diminished the numbers captured in the city, and that General Joseph E. Johnston had ran Grant out of Mississippi entirely. Another event and rumor tied to it encouraged the Confederates even more. The New York draft riots occurred. Citizens in New York rebelled against conscription. Men did not want to be drafted into the Union Army out of principle or fear, and a full-scale riot interrupted, destroying buildings and incurring casualties. Rumors spread throughout the South that the Union was pulling itself apart, and the riots would spread into Connecticut and Massachusetts. This gave Southerners hope that the Federal troops might be used to put down the internal rebellion and either force the United States to stop the war, or take away soldiers from the battlefront. The Battle of Chickamauga during September of 1863 gave the Confederates renewed hope that even though Vicksburg was taken, the great victory would lead to the northern states' elections in November, putting in politicians eager to end the war. Copperheads like Clement Vallandigham were slithering around the north attempting to convince the northern public to give in to the Confederacy and vote out those politicians who sought to continue to pursue war with the South. So those copperheads only fueled the fire of desire for the Confederacy. The preeminent historian Gary Gallagher has emphasized in numerous books that the Southern people looked to Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia as an invincible force and that it held the nation together and strengthened its feelings of nationalism. Essentially, Lee and his army literally held the country together from 1863 to the end of the war. All the Confederates' hopes and dreams rested with that army. So, that explains why Southerners were so eager to accept rumors of victory by that army. As Ulysses S. Grant pinned Lee's army down at the Confederate capital of Richmond, another famous rumor spread throughout the South, that Ulysses S. Grant had been killed in battle. A Texas cavalryman serving in Louisiana claimed to his father that he saw in an official dispatch that the Union Army had been launching numerous failed assaults on the Richmond earthworks, and that the last one was led by Grant himself, who was killed in the assault. 
He further declared that he believed the report to be true because a lady from Vicksburg said that the United States flag that flew over the city was at half-staff, signaling the death of Grant. However, those rumors faded, and a month later, Grant was reported killed again, but this time by a cannonball that removed his arm, and he died on the operating table. A Virginia artilleryman stated, Grant is still dead, but he comes back to life occasionally. When the siege of Atlanta ended, and the Union finally captured the Georgia city, the Confederacy refused to acknowledge the event. Many soldiers in Lee's army heard of Sherman's victory and declared these rumors false and anxiously awaited new reports, confirming their belief that the Confederacy had held on. Almost as soon as confirmation arrived to the soldiers in Lee's army that Atlanta had been captured by Sherman, reports began flooding in that Confederate General John Bell Hood had recaptured the city with few losses but had captured nearly 30,000 Union troops. Confederate camps in Virginia rejoiced at the news. Though false, they refused to believe reports of defeat. The South had developed a culture of invincibility. Despite the news soldiers acquired, if it was not good news, they attempted to reconcile it or believe it to be false. This was a huge part in how the Confederacy held itself together and were able to fight for so long. Rumor kept their hopes alive and kept their citizens and army intact and confident. Civil War historiography used to view the Confederacy as crumbling from within because the people possessed a lack of nationalism. But historians like Gary Gallagher and the focus of this video Jason Phillips have went to great lengths to demonstrate a cohesive Confederacy rather than a weak one. So no, the South did not win Gettysburg. But the rumors that they had won it and other battles boosted the morale of the Confederacy and helped hold it together through the last years of the war. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please check out the Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon page at the links in the description below. And check out the Teespring store. Have a great day, and I'll see you next week.